140 years ago, the Callander and Oban Railway in the southwest of Scotland set up a rockfall detection system along four miles of remote hillside railway track. The astonishing thing is, that system is still in operation today, 140 years later. And so far, no one's been able to come up with anything better. The West Highland lines travel hundreds of miles along natural mountainsides. There are different hazards depending on where you are on, this, on the Scottish Rail Network. Through the Falls of Cruachan, the hazards there are definitely rock fall and boulder fall. We're now at Bridge of Orkey on the West Highland line, and the hazards here are much more natural landslides and debris flows down the steep-sided mountains. Rocks that are very small can pose a risk to the train operations, so something as small as a microwave can cause a train a problem. Something as big as a washing machine could lead to derailment, so it is a really serious issue. Definitely stopping the hazard at source is the best option for us. In a typical year, we will spend somewhere in the region of £40 million. And that's on things that prevent landslides or improve the resilience of our infrastructure to extreme weather. Thank you very much. So Scotland Railway is about 3,500 track miles, so we can't protect that whole length. So we need to look at other ways of keeping the train safe, which is where the rockfall detection comes in. By modern standards, it's a really basic system. There's no electricity, just these wires along the track held under tension, mechanically linked to the signals. If a big boulder falls down, it hits a wire, the wire snaps, the tension's released, and the signal at each end of that bit of wire changes to show danger. Repeat for 17 signals over the four miles of railway. The system was nicknamed Anderson's Piano after its inventor and after the humming noises that the wires sometimes make in high winds. Anderson's Piano is a very old system, 140 years. Keeping something like that going in a modern environment is quite challenging. Firstly, I guess there's the knowledge. There's not a user manual or, or a downloadable book on how to maintain Anderson's Piano. We, we need to pass that down through generations of technicians and engineers. And then there's just getting hold of the kit. A lot of it was bespoke made in foundries in the Victorian era. Some of it we've had to improvise. Some of it is just availability of materials, so getting hold of some of the wire can be quite challenging. And we think we've managed to find a reasonable source that is a good enough match. The kind of rural and fence that will use that kind of wire, the manufacturers are striving to make it stronger and stronger, and we don't need it stronger for Anderson's piano. We need it to break when there's a rock comes through it. It's not perfect detection in terms of screening out, so vegetation can trip it off, animal movements if they do get inside the boundary. Very manual to reset, it's a physical task that involves lifting weights and repositioning counterbalances and manually moving signals back into place. So we can't do that when the trains are running, so that's disruptive to our network. It's a physical job that involves human beings. There's not a big reset button that we can push. The first we know there's a problem is when the signal goes up and normally the first person to see that is the train driver. We're not able to respond someone to the problem when it occurs. We need to wait until after it's occurred because the first time we know about it is when a driver tells us. Modern rail safety rules mean that ideally no one should ever drive a train past a signal that's set to danger. If that is ever needed because of a fault somewhere, it requires checking and double checking with central control. If a train goes past a danger signal without permission, there's always an investigation. If it was because the driver was negligent, it can end their career. But the rules for these signals have to be different and they go against everything that a modern train driver learns. If these signals are at danger, you slow the train down to walking pace, to a, a speed where you will be able to stop before you hit any obstruction, and you radio it in to central control, but you do continue. And that would never be allowed on a new system. It's offering us a level of protection. So there's a, there's a line of defence there that works quite a lot of the time. It would be less safe without it. Prevention is better than detection, so stopping the rocks falling is definitely better than detecting them when they have occurred. So we put a great deal of effort into containing some of the rocks on our cuttings and into catching boulders through high strength, high capacity catch fences that are anchored into the rock. We employ all sorts of techniques like netting and meshing and doweling to hold all the rock in place. We're constantly looking for technology to improve safety on the railway, a satellite technology that looks for ground movement from space and does change detection on that. We've tried listening fibres through fibre optic cables that listen for an acoustic signature of a rock falling or a tree falling on the railway. The cost of that equipment is starting to come down. We're starting to see advances in technology which is making it more affordable to deploy. 
But one of the big issues is actually power. These things will either need a power supply, which in remote places can be hard to come by, or they'll run off batteries and solar panels, which need to have sufficient capacity to keep them up all year round. Scottish winters can be quite dark. Some of our trials have been hampered by false alerts and false alarms and too many false alerts to run a railway. At Bridge of Orkey, we've got some detectors in place to capture any movement. Now, they are the wireless tilt meters that tell us if the ground's moving. Like your spirit level on your iPhone that, that moves about, they will detect a bit of movement and we will get an alert or an alarm remotely from that. We've then got a camera on site that we can see the site to see whether it's a false alarm or not, so we're not needlessly stopping trains. We've got some infrared kit on there so that we can see at night time the infrared reflectors to see if there's been a problem during hours of darkness as well. It's all remote back to base and it only requires a technician in our control centre to watch that and monitor that. It's also less prone to false alarms and we can reset it at the touch of a button so we know about it before the train comes. We can capture the problem before it manifests itself on the railway and um, we can remotely reset it and remotely monitor it. We do an awful lot, but it's not enough to, to go everywhere and you know we can't physically protect every mile of railway, it's just impracticable. From talking to the folks here, I'd say that the best description of these signals is that they are a frustrating, imperfect system that's still better than nothing. Back when I was researching this video, I figured that there must be a better solution and with all the confidence of someone in the YouTube comments who's only watched half the video, I thought, hey, couldn't they just... and no, they can't. At least, not yet. How's that for timing? <laughs>